Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, my name is Reese for Peace from KFC or Wiki Triple XL. And in this review, I've been having a play around with the 5600X and 5800X. Bullet point of the presentation is Gamers Delight. Maybe something for streamers as well. I think we need to start off with paying some homage to Auntie Lisa and Team AMD because they've taken an entire industry's lackadaisical nature and put it to work. It made everybody wake up and start working hard. And that I, we just have to thank her for that. There's, it's such a selfless act. Thank you so much for doing that, Auntie Lisa and Co. Team AMD, good job. You've done a good job all around. With everything that's coming on GPU with Big Navi, etc. This 5000 series launch is just a precursor to how good things are going to be now that we're back in the AMD era. And this is the first time in pretty much 15 years that they've been actually ahead. And well, let's say at least 12. Because when Core 2 Duo Core 2 Quad arrived in 2008, it just sort of changed the game. And Ryzen is steadily doing that. Because it took Intel a little while to get that perfected. Only when you got into the first generation and second generation Sandy Bridge R7s was it that much further ahead that it became almost a zero sum game. You almost couldn't catch up. Well, AMD couldn't catch up. And they haven't basically been competitive for the better part of seven years. And they were always competitive, sure, even before that, but they were never truly industry leading. Now, with the 5000 series launch, that is all changing. So with the 5600X and 5800X, a couple of things to note before we get into any benchmarks or anything of that manner. The test bench setup is slightly different compared to the 3950X that I'm going to be comparing it to. That's on an X470 board, which is about 2% differential going to an X570 board. The RAM on that as well is the original Corsair 3466 kit running at 3200MHz CL16. And on this bench, I'm using 3600 megahertz cl22 so it is a little bit slow on the timings but the increased speed should give it about a percent to two percent worth of headroom ahead of the 3950x as well but the gpu is identical both of them are using my 2670 gaming x super both systems had 100 megahertz on the core and 1100 megahertz in the memory one thing with the open air test bench it does have a bit of an advantage with cooling because Basically, the chamber that it's in is the entire room. It's not just the PC case that it's stuck in. And things like airflow and stuff through the case are normally going to affect your temperatures by at least 5 to 10 degrees, depending on your setup. Some of them can be a lot worse than that. My system at the time of testing with the 2070 Super did have very good cooling in it. And I did see about uh, as, as little as about 3 to 4 degrees increase on the GPU uh, temperatures at that time. So it shouldn't affect overall boost clocks and that sort of stuff too adversely, not to the point that there's going to be a massive difference between scores because of it. All that being noted and said though, you're going to notice that the 5600X and 5800X run away with the show when it comes to single core performance. And something that's extremely pertinent is the Firestrike benchmark which I actually have open here behind me and you won't be able to see it from there but I'll take a print screen of this window and show you exactly what I'm talking about. The main thing is for me is here with the physics test and the combined test scores. They increased so significantly that a 2700X literally gets half of what the 5800X does in the multi-threaded test or the multi or combined test and that's such an important test because it's doing physics calculations and GPU texture pushing simultaneously. And that's just showing off that new internal restructured design, which I actually went into some length with the 5800 or 5900X and 5950X review at least. And it, it really is showing some promising results to the point that the 5600X is now the fourth best gaming processor you can buy. And that's 6,000 Rand in South African money. So instead of having to spend 10,000 Rand on even a 3900 XT or an Intel 10900K, 
you can now get away with 6,000 Rand. So it's like a 40% discount to get the fourth best gaming chip in the world. And if that wasn't enough, it also has significantly improved multi-threaded processing to the point that the 5600X actually runs almost toe to toe with my 2700X, which is eight core 16 thread, with the 5600X being six core 12 thread. Now their multi-threaded is almost comparable. So you could quite comfortably even stream on a 5600X, especially if you use an RTX GPU. It's actually one of the most unsung uses of that graphics card that I've ever seen. Like with my 2070, for instance, I can stream through it on the NVENC codec and literally lose 1% on average performance. So let's say I'm getting 130 frames. When I start streaming, it drops to 127 frame average. That's literally the performance impact that you'll have with that. Now, obviously it still leans a little bit on the CPU to get some of the encoding support and stuff it needs, maybe 10 to 15% worth of CPU usage. But if your CPU is really fast, like the 5600X, and you're gaining frame rate anyway, to stream on a 5600X with RTX will be better than anything I could do with the 2700X because of that single core performance, because of these scores in these combined tests. That's literally almost the exact same kind of test except now it's exacerbated and turned up to 10,000% because 3D Mark things and the physics tests are quite real. They load the, the CPU to 99%. So effectively we're loading the CPU as hard as we possibly can with physics instructions and then expecting it to do GPU at the same time. And it's actually completely capable of doing both. So having had a look at those benchmark results and even comparing them to each other, what AMD has set up is exactly what I said they were going to do in my 3300X video. This is why you guys should watch more of my content, okay? Because I'm actually, I actually maybe know what I'm talking about from time to time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bit of a tooting my own trumpet there. But don't, don't sue me, okay? Because ultimately my goal is to help you make better purchasing decisions. If, for instance, you had bought a 3300X with an A520 or B550 motherboard, you could then sell that chip almost for what you bought it for and then upgrade to a 5600X. That would then unlock all of that potential for you, give you design-capable work, give you gaming on the highest level or of the highest levels that you can get to right now. But what I most importantly mentioned in that video on the 3300X and 3100 was how AMD is setting up their scaling. Practically, your single core performance per chip is not varying all that much. It's, yes, the 5600X compared to the 5950X, there is going to be a gap. I'd expect there to be more of a gap when the one costs 6,000, the other one costs 15,000. But that is actually really, actually kind of good world of AMD, to be very honest with you, because they're allowing you to buy more entry level CPUs and still get the same single core performance. So now all you have to scale on is how many cores you want for your different workloads. So if you're like me and you're doing a lot of video, etc., more cores, the better, better multi-threaded performance, better render performance. And it just makes my job a lot easier, quicker, smoother, and faster, of course. So if I was scaling into that, I would personally look at a 5900X because 12 core, 24 thread means that I render a lot better. But do I need it necessarily for gaming? Even the 5600X will stream like a breeze. I've met so many people that are using RTX with the 2700X for streaming and have absolutely no issues. I've set up actually a friend of mine on a 2070 Super with the 3700X as his streaming platform and he's been using it since day one like that and has had absolutely no issues. And the performance knocks are barely noticeable because of that. So this just takes it and just dials it up even further to the point now that like I said, you can buy a 6000 Rand CPU, buy yourself an RTX GPU, and then stream through that simultaneously. So with the 5600X and 5800X and 5900X and 5950X, you're literally just looking at how many cores you need to complete the jobs you have on hand. I know guys with 3900X T builds that are never going to use that amount of cores for gaming. They don't stream, they don't do anything like that. But they bought it because it was the second fastest or third fastest CPU you could buy right now. But like I said, with this setup, you're not limited by that. It's just really good. This is a really good setup from MD. I'm just so thrilled and impressed with everything that they've done. And also definitely water cooling. 240 more rad, wherever you go will be great. You can get away with a really big air cooler on the 5600X and 5800X. Under like this, 
I saw 60 degrees. Even when I did the um, pre-build review with the 5600X with a 120mm rad on it, it was sitting at 64 degrees maximum. This was past mid, low 60s for both chips because yeah, those wattage improvements are quite noticeable. It's not very thirsty, these chips, so they don't get very hot. Oh, how the turns have tables. Anyway, that is all we have time for in this review. If you have enjoyed it, then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Tooting my own trumpet there, but you don't, don't sue me, okay?